Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I'll be explaining how I create hands in pastors, uh, looking at my techniques and tips. Um, be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be doing real-time footage so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, so just doing the basic outline to start with. We, first of all, we're just getting the overall shape in and then just lightly working where you feel that these fingers lie. And you can do that by using your pencil horizontal and vertical to see where the al alignment is. Um, and then once you've got a rough idea, then go over it uh, with the finer details using the rubber to mold the shape of the fingers as well um, but all the time measuring if you haven't seen my video three ways how to draw the outline it's in my channel uh, i'll go into great depth in how to do uh, these techniques in outline drawing so um, take a look at that really uh, at the end of the video um, to get a more in-depth idea of what I'm doing here. The thing is when you're doing hands and fingers it's strange how it looks because you, you have to go beyond what you see on the image because the outline will not look like what you see strange as it seems it, it the actual outline looks strange it's only till you start putting the form in that it looks like fingers and hands so you have to go beyond what it looks like and see the outline right i tend to use a value scale of nine values four lights four darks and one mid-tone Here's the basic collection of uh, pencils I'm using to start with, just to get the basic shape in. And also a brown and blue there for the deep shadow. So the first layer of colour is just basically to get the form in there. So we're using the primary colours, red, blue and yellow. The yellow I'm using for this at this stage would be like a yellow ochre and then like a warm red and then a couple of greens, cold and warm green. Now there's ways you can do this, you know, I mean I, what I tend to do is just get the the basic sort of layer in first just to cover the tooth so it's easier for the subsequent layers. But you could do just a finger and then just work through all the layers and get that perfectly uh, as fine as you can get it and then move on to the next finger and then to the next and to the next until the whole hand's done. My approach these days is to do the whole thing so then I get a sense of all the energy and subtleties of the whole image, what I'm creating all at once. Here's a bit of real-time footage just showing you how I'm using the Caran d'Ache pencils now for the second layer of colour. What this is a more intense and vibrant pencil. Uh, the pigment is a lot more richer. So I intend to sort of put a bit of that in now. So putting the white in first and then the colours on top of the white had that vibrancy to it because the white actually shines through the colour then almost like glazing and oil paintings or, or watercolour um, but you're doing it with pastels and what I'm using here is a bit of blue because that seems a little bit orange on the uh, paper there so to dull an orange down you use the complementary colour which is blue now if that was a bit red I would use green 
to dull the colour down or make it into like a shadowy colour. Right, so here's a bit of real-time footage again, just to show you how I'm doing the intense shadow area. I don't tend to use black in flesh colour. So I use a brown, which if you're an oil painting artist or watercolour artist, you'll notice burnt umber, that's sort of close to that shade. And then uh, going over that then with maybe red to richen it up a little bit, to give it more vibrance in the shadow. So here you can see me putting some red in there. And that's like a Lysian crimson, a cold like a red. Um, so that sort of really gives it that intense shadow feel to it, rather than black, because sometimes when you use a black it makes it look dull. You know, you don't you lose some energy in, in the shadow. So I tend to sort of put other colours in there, like brown reds sometimes I use purple with that as well blue brown and blue makes a really intense dark shadow so it's just weighing it up really what's needed if you found you're getting value from this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos Now to achieve the glistening of the nails, I used Caran d'Ache, like a pinky colour, putting that in first, and then using the lemon yellow over the top, which created like a slight orangey colour. It's a case of trying these different things out, really. I um, mean, you have all these different brands of pencils, some advantages and disadvantages with them all. And it's a case of trying them and then finding your unique way of doing it. But this is what seems to work for me. If I want to do something glistening or, or even more vibrant is, is to add that Caran d'Ache element using some sort of pencil close to the colour. And then going over with the basic primary colours.
Here's an image of the hand at the correct angle so you can see how I saw it. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it, it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much, take care, and be well.